Hi, Charlotte. <gasps> Charlotte. Marty Kidian is a first-time grandfather. There's so much he longs to say to his granddaughter Charlotte, but he can't after losing his voice following surgery to battle cancer. A month after the surgery, I lost my voice. I just had my first grandchild. In 2013, the Haverhill, Massachusetts man was diagnosed with a rare form of cancer in his larynx called chondrosarcoma. In 10 years, he underwent 14 surgeries. Finally, doctors told him the only option left was a laryngectomy or removal of his voice box. She knew I was depressed and out of my mind. She went online and said, there's got to be another way to fix this. And she found Dr. Lott. Almost 2,700 miles across the country at Mayo Clinic in Phoenix, Arizona, Dr. David Lott was looking for that other way. For almost two decades, Dr. Lott and his team have been researching laryngeal transplantation. In 2016, his larynx and trachea transplant program received approval to conduct the first known clinical trial investigating the procedure, a significant step forward in making the procedure a scientifically proven safe and effective procedure for everyone. What about all these people with larynx dysfunction who don't have this as an option? And you know, my favorite question to ask is why? Why don't they have this option? We know this works here, we know that we need to get here. What are the steps we need to take? And that's what this clinical trial is about. An estimated 12,650 people will be diagnosed with laryngeal cancer in the U.S. this year. According to Dr. Lott, many will suffer loss of laryngeal function and their ability to speak, swallow, and breathe on their own. Many, like Marty, will also be forced to rely on a tracheostomy tube to breathe which Dr. Lott says drastically diminishes quality of life. Very socially awkward and socially embarrassing for people. So these patients become very reclusive. And I've had a lot of my patients tell me, yes, I may be living, but I'm not truly alive. One of the biggest challenges in advancing laryngeal transplantation as a viable option for cancer patients has been the use of immunosuppressive therapy, which transplant patients are given to suppress the body's immune system and reduce the risk of organ rejection. However, giving a cancer patient immunosuppression also increases their risk of the cancer spreading. Marty was already on immunosuppression from a previous kidney transplant, allowing doctors to do his transplant without introducing additional risks. Which now the rest of the world can look at and say, well, here we've done this transplant in cancer. How does this look? Or can we now take this and safely take a much smaller step to more aggressive cancers? During the 21-hour procedure, a team of six surgeons first removed Marty's diseased larynx. With cancer margins negative and doctors confident the cancer was gone, they proceeded with transplanting the new donor larynx, thyroid and parathyroid glands, and in the back of the throat, the pharynx, upper parts of the esophagus and trachea, and an intricate network of blood vessels and nerves. Two days after surgery, Marty is up and around. Four weeks later, Marty is discharged, his trach tube left in place while he regains the ability to breathe. You're going to pour that sip in your mouth, but before you swallow, put the sip in your mouth, keep it small. You did it. Good job. Proud of you. Wide. Finally, speak all yeah. on his Just own. Just go. Ooh. Four months after surgery, his voice is already at 60%. Uh, some broccoli and cheddar soup, English muffins. Never in my wildest dreams would I expect him to be eating a hamburger a little over three months after a transplant. It's just amazing to me. Um, and then from a breathing standpoint, same thing. That I wouldn't have even seen, foreseen happening for at least a year, if ever. It will take up to a year for Marty to regain full use of his voice. For now, he's grateful he has broken the silence, can finally speak to his granddaughter, and after a 10-year battle, is finally cancer-free. 
It's incredible. I don't have to worry about it anymore. I'm a lucky, lucky person. Don't give up. Don't give up. Never give up on life. For the Mayo Clinic News Network, I'm Marty Velasco-Hames.